G'day there, my name is Blakus, and today I will be sharing with you three ways that Cubase makes my life as a composer so much better. Now I've been using Cubase from the very beginning when I became a composer for about seven years now, and there are so many things to love about it, and that's why I've chosen it. I love the way that you can edit MIDI so easily without headaches. I love the, the expression maps. I love the batch export tool. And there's lots of other videos out there on, um, on the internet about these things. Now, the ones that I'm going to focus on today are kind of not talked about hugely. And that's why I thought it might be interesting to bring them to your attention. But they are things that really help my my system stay stable and running while using a large amount of tracks. Disabled tracks has to be one of my favorite features in Cubase. As a composer that uses the orchestra a lot, I am required to use stupid amounts of instruments in my music. Uh, as you can see here, we have violins, all sorts of brass, woodwinds, percussion, and, and then you've got all of your hybrid hits and synthesizers, pianos, guitars, drums. It, it's all there. Uh, and I think my track count is nearly 500. Yes, my last track is 497. Now, that's a lot of tracks, and it requires a bit of a supercomputer in, in, in a lot of ways. Now, my computer is quite reasonable. I have a large amount of RAM to be able to hold all of these instruments at once. I have 128 gigs. RAM's not really the issue. The CPU is the thing that I find is my biggest struggle as a composer. Not only do all these instruments use a, you know, a decent amount of CPU power, the plugins used to mix them are the things that uh, require the most CPU power. And with 500 tracks... There's a lot of plugins going on. I have literally hundreds of plugins running inside this template. So this is a template that I load up every morning when I come into my studio and it's it's all ready for me, ready to go. Now, disabled tracks help me immensely because it means I don't have to have every single instrument loaded into my computer's brain all at once. Now, it's very unlikely, in fact, probably impossible that I would ever use every single instrument or track in this project for any piece of music. So it doesn't make sense to have everything loaded ready to go. And if that's the case, why should I waste my precious computer power on instruments that are not even going to be used? My number one priority is to be able to have quick access to every instrument that I might be able to need during my writing process. I can't stand having to load instruments and find instruments in the middle of, a, of the writing process. It needs to be smooth and seamless for me. And so using a template where everything is already mixed and everything is already balanced to a certain degree at a good starting point helps me a lot. Now, by being able to disable tracks, I am freeing my computer of the precious resources needed to be able to keep this, this project running. As you can see here, all of my strings are loaded, but as I scroll down to my woodwinds, they become a darker color, and that's because they are actually disabled and I need to enable them. Now, it's as easy as just this, really. I click that and now it's ready to go. Not only has it just enabled this instrument, it has also enabled and remembered the processing that I applied to it, the routing that I applied to it, the balance, everything, panning, everything has been remembered um, at the moment that I disabled it, which is extremely useful. So if I'm writing a piece of music and I'm using my strings and I'm using my brass, I decide that I need my, my woodwinds now, I can easily enable it and off I go. Now, usually my process would be to just enable instruments as I need them and, uh, I'll disable this one again because I'm not going to use it. Cubase, rem I could make changes to that, by the way. I could change the EQ on that and disable it, and it would remember it. Now, uh, I usually enable the tracks as I go as needed because that's the most resource-efficient way to do it. But if I know I'm about to do a whole massive woodwind thing, I can easily go here, right-click, enable track. I've selected all my woodwinds. And now one after the other, it's actually going to load them. 
Take note of how long it's taking to load these tracks, by the way. It's a bit of, it's a significant time. It might take about a minute. There's a lot of samples being loaded right now. Not only that, there's also a lot of effects in my mixer channel side of things that are being loaded as well. It's also putting all the routing back into place and slotting it into my template as though it never left. Very impressive. Now that load time, by the way, is uh, very important because every time I load this template with all of the disabled tracks, I'm also saving myself that load time, which means that my whole template of 500 tracks, which probably has a couple, maybe 100 or 200 disabled tracks, it loads a lot faster, which is great. It means I don't have to wait around as long in the morning when I, when I load it up. Let's disable those again. And I think that's about it for disabled tracks, but I'm hoping you can see why that is such a fantastic feature. Number two. Now this one's a little bit nerdy, I will admit, but there is no way that I would be able to run this template of 500 tracks with hundreds of effects and instruments without one of Cubase's little features that's not talked about very often, but I'm a huge fan. Let's have a look. If you go to Studio Setup here, you will see that there is a little option called ASIO Guard. And you'll see that I have this on high. So what does ASIO Guard actually do? Well, as a composer, I need to be able to play instruments in real time as I, as I go, which means I need a low amount of latency. I want to be able to play and hear in real time. Which is so difficult when you're using such a big template with so many plugins. Now the problem is, is the way that ASIO works is the lower your latency, the more processing power is required because you're asking more of your computer. You're asking it to do it now. You can actually change your buffer size in your sound card settings, which will adjust your latency, but it will also give your computer a little bit of breathing room if you increase it. So at the moment I'm running 256 samples and as you can see here it's giving me six and a half milliseconds of latency. Uh, and if I was to increase that, I won't do it now because it'll probably mess with my project. If I was to increase that to, you know, 2000, I would, the, the, C, the ASIO media would drop quite a bit because the computer's now not having to process things so much in real instant time. It's been given a bit of a buffer. Hence the name buffer size. Now, this is pretty cool. If you have a look here at the Cubase window, because I have ASIO Guard activated, you'll also see another latency measure, and that is 92 milliseconds, which is quite a significant amount of delay. And if I were to play live in real time with that amount of delay, it would kind of be a bit unplayable and quite confusing. Now, what is ASIO Guard? actually doing? Well, it's kind of doing the best of both worlds. It kind of creates two streams of audio processing. One that is instant real time using your selected buffer size, which is giving me six and a half milliseconds, which is extremely playable and feels great. And then it creates a second stream of processing that is delayed quite a lot to the point where it actually gives the your computer 92 milliseconds to be able to process everything that's required. The CPU in particular loves that and can handle so much more, gives more time for your multi-core threads to start processing information um, without so much stress on the system. Now, how does it work though? The way it works is by which track you have currently selected. So I have my violins track selected in the two streams. It's now allocated this channel that I've selected to the real-time stream. Now, I'm just using my own words to describe the way it works, by the way. And so everything feels feels very live and, and responsive. Now, what's interesting, and this is the exciting part, every other channel that is not currently selected is actually running 
in Cubase's other stream, the ASIO guard stream, where everything has been actually running. It's, it's like it's running at a high, at that higher buffer level. And then Cubase does some trickery to make it all line up and there's never any timing issues or anything like that. So it's a, it's a very clever uh, mechanic that, that allows me to run a template that is far bigger than what I probably should be able to run in a real-time setting. Now, I know I owe a lot to this feature because in a large project, if I disable ASIO guard, the whole system comes crashing down. Overload meters everywhere. It literally cannot even start playing the project. So it's doing a lot of work in the background. And if you're a Cubase user that uses quite large templates, and even if you don't use large templates, I think this feature is amazing. And as I swap channels around, Cubase will automatically allocate the selected channel to the real-time stream and all other processing will go to the ASIO guard stream. It's interesting because if you have a channel selected that is using a lot of plugins, you will notice that you'll see it represented in your CPU usage or in your ASIO meter. You can see that it's working heavy and as soon as you click away onto something that's not quite as heavy, when the computer then allocates it to the ASIO guard stream with a higher buffer and more relaxed sort of settings, it drops back down again. Very cool feature. This last one is just a great quality of life improvement when dealing with super large templates. Sometimes it's very easy to just scroll around like I'm doing here, trying to find what you need to find. I don't even have all of my folders open, by the way, so this is this can get even more hectic than what it is now. But Cubase has some pretty cool features built in to help navigate this mess, I guess you could say. And they have inbuilt visibility settings, and you can add configurations for which tracks or channels you want to see at any given time, and then save it as a preset. And you can see over here, there's a visibility tab and it's as simple as being able to click a tick next to the channels you want to see right now. And I've gone through and ticked all of my strings and created a strings preset, which means that when I scroll down, I only see my strings. And I, the cool thing is, is you can assign this to key commands and I've assigned it to buttons on, on my Elgato stream deck. So I can just click brass and only brass is shown or woodwinds same thing it just is a great way of organizing what would normally be a very cluttered project so those are just three of the things that i love about cubase that help make my life as a composer so much easier thanks for joining me